Hey you, what's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your friendly neighborhood content creator. In this video, I'll be going over my experience with Shunha and what that would mean to you as a player that might want to wish for her. Regardless of her cool skills, I wanted to give you guys my honest opinions on Shunha. The highs, the lows, and what makes her a desirable character to summon for. Shana has many strengths that outshine many supports that are available. The only thing being is that she buffs Cryo mostly. She is capable of bringing her sigils onto the field to really introduce a new way to deal more damage as a Cryo character or even characters of a different type. We should start with her skills and talents. Shunha has a great kit. Then on boosting cryo allies to deal more damage with her elemental skill as well as her elemental burst. Her elemental skill has two options readily available. A press and a hold. The press allows Shunha to dash forward dealing cryo damage along her path and buff allies elemental skill and burst damage by 15%. The hold however allows Shunha to substitute backwards causing an AoE of cryo damage and applying a normal charge and plunging attack buff for 15% as well. Her ascension 1 talent allows her to give an extra 15% cryo damage bonus to anyone who is within her burst field, really applying that cryo buff for your DPS character. So when you use your elemental burst and you stay within that field, you're going to receive this 15% extra damage in your character's cryo damage. Although this is just the tip of the iceberg, Shunha's kit is greatly appreciated by her icy quill talent. When you use her skill and deal cryo damage, an icy quill effect takes place and you can change to any character with this effect still applied on your character. Because of this, she is able to buff your allies for a certain number of hits rather than a snapshot of damage buff. This effect can also be applied to skills or bursts that are already on the field, which is a positive thing. Her burst also shreds resistance for both cryo and physical upwards of 15% at max talent. Definitely positive for an icy show. With Shunha's elemental skill talent being at a cool level 8, she gives a damage bonus of 73% of your current attack, meaning Shunha benefits a lot for stacking your entire kit on attack percentage. Their artifacts will mainly be attack percentage based. Although this will greatly decrease your ability to deal critical hits, her attack transfer is much more appreciated over her general damage output. As we've seen with many other characters in the past, the polearm is actually the most used weapon in Genshin Impact, making it accessible and easily to obtain. This is a great strength for Shunha as she benefits a lot from weapons like the Lithic Spear, Wavebreaker's Fin, the Catch, Deathmatch, Black Cliff, whatever the weapon may be. So for Shunha's weapons, there are a bunch of pole arms as I have said. There's the Wavebreaker's Fin, there's the Catch, there's the Deathmatch, there's the Black Cliff Pole, whatever weapon. There's the Lithic Spear, there's a bunch of weapons for you guys to choose from. However, obviously there are good weapons and there are bad weapons. As you guys can see, the Skyward Spine actually has a base attack of 674, which is pretty darn good as it increases crit rate as well. This is good because it has a large base attack and some energy recharge on there. However, there are better options for you guys to pick from as the Waves Breaker Spin actually does perform better than the Skyward Spine. The only thing good about the Skyward Spine is that it actually gives you some energy recharge as well. The catch is a good option for you guys that want that extra energy recharge, especially if you guys don't have a better option on your actual, you know, inventory. Uh, it gives a burst crit rate as well and gives the elemental burst damage increase as well. However, the base attack is not the greatest on this weapon as Shenhe does need a lot of attack, so it's kind of an alright weapon to go for. The deathmatch is a decent weapon to go for, however, I would not recommend it. I would go for the weapon as a black cliff as it gives you a better base attack as well as more attack percentage. However, it could give you a decent amount if this is the weapon that you currently have and you can probably use it to your advantage. Now, the Lithic Spear, most of you guys might not even have this as a weapon, but the Lithic Spear is actually a really, really good weapon to pick up. This gives you a bunch of attack percentage as well as crit rate increase and this weapon is really, really powerful if you have a leeway team the primordial jade wing spear is actually a pretty good option for shana as well as it gives you a bunch of attack percentage on the 
passive as well as crit rate and a large base attack so this weapon is actually pretty decent for your artifact substats you're going to want energy recharge on there because it's really important as she has an energy cost of 80 on her burst so you kind of need energy recharge on her substats as well as you know the obvious being crit damage crit rate on them as well however the energy recharge is much more important her best artifact set is currently the shimanawa's reminiscence as well as the gladiator's finale as they both provide an 18 percent increase in your attack this is really beneficial as obviously we need shana to stack as much, much attack percentage as possible so she can have the most attack this will allow you to transfer the most amount of attack possible to your current character that you want to buff her constellations are pretty interesting as her four first constellation is similar to that of Zhao as she can use her elemental skill one more time the constellation two talent is actually pretty interesting to me as well as her divine's bane deliverance or her elemental burst actually lasts for six seconds longer her active or the active character within the field deals 15 percent increased ryo crit damage as well this really helps <laughs> put her out there with the support making her really powerful her constellation three helps her elemental skill skill increase in level by three the fourth constellation now when you have icy quill already applied by shenhe when it gets triggered on the field its damage bonus effects will actually give you another stack called the sky frost mantra basically what this does is whenever you use your elemental skill she will consume a stack of the sky frost mantra increasing the damage of the spring spirit summoning by five percent for each stack consumed you can get a maximum of 50 stacks this way that all last for 16 seconds kind of insane this constellation makes her such a good support unit it just increases damage and makes your damage potential that much better not to mention her c6 allows the icy quills effect you know using normal charge attack but not count toward the trigger quota so this sort of is like arataki ito where you have like a chance to not consume a superlative super strength stack but rather this is the icy quill effect that you can potentially not trigger so you can do more damage overall generally her constellations aren't that needed for a support character like shunha however they are sort of nice to have if you to have them maybe at c1 i would stop at c2 if that is where you want to go her talents i would not recommend increasing her normal attack past six however the most important one would probably be the elemental skill i would probably increase my elemental skill damage the most or talent level because this is where you give the icy quills damage bonus effect you want this to be as high as possible so if you want you can even crown this for shen he. Her mental burst, you know, as much as you want to increase it, it's not that important as long as you just get the elemental burst on the field. This will apply all the nice effects and the resistance decreases that are there. However, the more talents you have on the elemental burst, the more resistance decrease that, are, that is going to be happening. The level 8 decrease is only 13%. But if you go to upwards of the maximum level 10, you can get upwards of a 15% resistance decrease. Now it's time to state some things that might go for the other direction for some individuals thinking about summoning for Shunha. Now Shunha is an excellent support unit for your cryo characters and is a fantastic pickup for those who have characters like Ganyu or Kamisato Ayaka as they greatly benefit from the bonuses that Shunha provides. However, if you do not have any of these DPS characters nor plan on getting them in the future, it's hard to suggest going for a character like Shen He. Shen he does mainly buff cryo units, even when she can buff other units, it just feels like it doesn't suit her capabilities, or rather, for a lack of word, copium. She doesn't fit in a team with Eula, even though her kit sort of sounds like it does. Even when she boosts elemental burst damage, shreds cryo, and physical resistance within her elemental bursts field, it just feels clunky and unusual to use. Using another character to like Zhongli or Diona would be a better use of the character slot. Saying that Shenhe is a niche character would honestly be a little bit of a disservice for how good this character can actually be. This character can actually boost your cryo damage for an 
insane amount. But even with all that said, I personally really like Shen Hammer's story quest to strong character design. She definitely has a place in my party. Even without current cryo DPS, she will boost future cryo characters that come out. Unlike most DPS characters, Shunha is a support that will last a really long time in cryo team composition. But yeah, Shunha is an excellent character and I really do enjoy her, especially for, you know, cryo compositions or permanent freeze compositions. I feel like she's going to really outshine so many supports there. And yes, I generally do like this character. But yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel as well. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. Goodbye. All right, we're back get rid of this boom boom gonna hit as many times as possible all right there we go all right we're back get rid of this again all right, this time we're gonna use Shen He. Boom, boom, and boom. Oh wait, that was a 10k. What? Okay, so all right, we're pretty much halfway. All right, this one we're gonna use Shen He's buffs, both her amount of burst and amount of kill. All right, all right, there we go. We're gonna do this first, and then Shen He. Now, bang! Oh! What? <laughs> I found the main DPS strong you now. What the heck? Okay, he's pretty much almost dead. Are you kidding me? Alright, let's try this one more time with Benipa. Alright. Here we go. Alright, we're gonna Benipa. Gen buff. Wise and bang! What? What? It just did for 45k. Oh, it's gonna one round it. Oh, it pretty much one round it. Wait, wait, let's try it again. Let's try this again. I'm gonna use Xing Cho here to get rid of this. All right, down. I'm gonna use Chong Yun first, and then this, and then we're gonna use her buffs. And bang! Oh my! Are you joking? My my Chongyun isn't fully built yet. He's... Okay, level 80 Serpent's fine. Artifacts, just using like a two-piece set of Blizzard Strayer. Oh, level 4 Flower. Oh, level 16 Attack. Peace. Uh, Constellation 2. And 665 on his talent. Are you joking?